Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another figure review. Now today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit older. This could technically even be called a retro review. Now this is of course the T2 Judgment Day T1000 by Entebbe. This is a quarter scale figure. Now it's been a while since I've actually gotten anything from Entebbe and this is of course an older figure. Going back and watching T1 and T2 again in preparation for seeing Terminator Dark Fate, I've got the Terminator bug. I absolutely had to have this figure. As soon as I saw him listed on eBay, I pulled the trigger. And I also have the T-800, the battle damage version, on the way very soon as well. So do let me know if you want to see a review on that guy. But either way, what we're going to do now is get all of the T-1000's accessories out here and take a closer look. Now as you can see, the T-1000 comes with a fair amount of accessories. Now let's get the least exciting one out of the way first, that of course being his display base. Now this piece on the top is removable and it's a really awesome looking well painted piece and it's made out of metal. That's totally awesome. Something very unexpected and something that I don't think we've really seen that often with a lot of really high-end collectibles nowadays. So for back in the day, that is totally awesome that they did that. Now here is the underside of the display base, which has that sort of metal foundry sort of steelworks look about it. And you can see that there are three bullet holes in there. Those bullet holes are for the actual little leg grabber. And that's awesome. To have that actual place on the display base that you can plug this into that doesn't sort of look out of place when you don't have it plugged in, they basically look like three bullet holes. I absolutely love that. And it gives you a bit of modularity as well in terms of where you want to plug it in. And then of course on the front it just says Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So very impressed with the simple display base here. It is pretty straightforward but I'm still very impressed. Now let's take a look at this piece here which is also a pretty straightforward piece. It's just the metal rod that you saw him use in the steel foundry and he was obviously slashed by as well. This is made out of metal as well. It's really heavy. It's a solid die cast piece. There are protectors on the end because they are relatively sharp so do be careful if you do actually go ahead and pick this guy up but I love the fact that they've made this out of the material that it was in the movie. Now let's take a look at his interchangeable boots. These are pieces that I really don't think they needed to include but I'm really glad they did. So obviously these are supposed to be paired with this piece right here. You place it on there it looks like he's sort of morphing out of it. There is a bit of a colour difference between the two but I still think it works quite nicely. Obviously the film was made some time ago and the CGI is a little bit dated so you can kind of play into that with these pieces not quite matching in terms of the colour. They do just plug on to the actual T-1000. There's a little angled peg which does say in the instructions make sure the peg is angled down when you plug it in so do make sure you are doing that but I'm pretty impressed with the fact that they've included these. Now let's take a look at the Robert Patrick head. This is the second head sculpt. He does come with two and as you can see it does have the hole in there from when he was blasted away. I really like the way this looks with the eye off to the side with a really evil sort of look about it and of course the really nice shiny metal on the inside there with a wider opening towards the back. This looks absolutely outstanding and when we get the figure himself out here I think you're going to be very very impressed with the likeness of just the standard head sculpt. Now let's take a look at his sort of, I don't even know what you call this, spike finger hands. They are very impressive, really nicely painted, and there's a nice sort of gradation between the silver and the skin tone where it sort of blends in. I really like the way this looks. The paintwork is pretty nice for a figure that's actually a little bit older. You can see some nice vein work on the inside there. Very well painted for back in the day. Now let's take a look at some of his bullet effects. These do just magnetize onto the front of the figure. Really sort of simple engineering, but I really love the way they've done it. The whole upper torso is magnetized, so you can sort of place these wherever you like to make it look like he's been shot up. Either way, that's pretty much it for the accessories. What we're going to do now is get the T-1000 himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have the T-1000 himself looking like a total badass. I absolutely love the way this figure looks. They've perfectly recaptured all the little details in the likeness. Now in terms of the paintwork itself, don't worry, when we zoom in and get a closer look, you'll see how good the paintwork is, especially for a figure that's quite a few years old. I'm really impressed with what Entebbe was doing back in the day. Now in terms of the outfit itself, it's a pretty straightforward design in terms of just being a straight up police uniform. However, all the details are really well done. The police badge looks outstanding, the name badge looks great, all the little buttons are picked out in silver, the actual way the outfit drapes over the body is fantastic. The proportions look just about bang on to Robert Patrick in the movie. They have absolutely killed it. Either way, what we're going to do now is punch in and take a closer look at that head sculpt. Now, as you can see, I think the likeness is absolutely spot on. Now, I don't own the Hot Toys 1.6 scale version, but a lot of people have said this is by far the superior figure. And I don't know if that's down to it being quarter scale or down to the fact that Enter Bay maybe spent a little bit more time getting it just right. However, I think this is totally on point. The paintwork is absolutely immaculate. And for back in the day when this guy was released quite a few years ago, Enter Bay were 
were definitely on the top of their game. This figure looks absolutely outstanding. The way the outfit lays, the body proportions, how simple the overall look is, they have killed it. This guy looks absolutely fantastic. Now, some of these sort of action features, I guess, are these bullets that you can attach to the body. And as you can see, they are magnetic and you can sort of place them wherever you like and they do just sit on there. And I think it looks really good. When you have quite a few on him, it looks like he's been sprayed by a shotgun or maybe a uh, automatic machine gun or something. It looks totally awesome and I love it. They have definitely killed it. That was a feature that I think was absolutely necessary for this figure and I'm so very glad that they did include it. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit. I do have him on his display base. He's a little bit top heavy and the fact that these boots don't actually have a split cut and a solid plastic means that you don't get any ankle articulation. That's one of the biggest complaints that I do have on this figure. It's the fact that you can't move the ankles and that means that you always have to use his little grabber piece on the side there to keep him standing upright. While that's not too big of annoyance, for me personally, I do want to be able to have him in like a running pose or something and you just really can't get that with these solid boots. They should have been made, in my opinion, out of material. But either way, at least they are painted really nicely. You can see there's a nice wash throughout and all the little details, including the little buckles on the back, are picked out in paint, which looks really good. You can also see the nice white stripe running down the side of the pants that have that really sort of motorcycle cop style outfit and I do appreciate it. It looks really, really good. And as you can see, he does stand pretty nicely on the display base with the aid of that piece right there. So I am glad that they did include this rather than one that comes up as a crotch grabber because it's sort of low profile it stays out of the way it's not too big of a deal in terms of having it there especially if you have him off to the side it sort of does hide out of the way quite nicely and of course it is modular so you can put it wherever you like but anyway the outfit itself lays really nicely I actually really like the belt it looks very realistic it's got that sort of cinched sort of outer section to the belt itself it looks really darn good so overall the outfit the portrait everything about this figure I am totally in love with it and Tobey have killed it now for a quick side by side comparison here's the DX10 on the right compared to the Entebbe quarter scale T1000 now while this isn't quite the sort of scale that you should be going with with your T800 I still think this goes to show how big and the sort of greater scale of detail that you can include with a quarter scale figure I think the proportions look a lot better in terms of the actual way the outfit lays on the figure obviously it's a different character but it just goes to show how good the quarter scale figures can look and don't worry when we get the quarter scale T800 in we will do a side by side comparison to the DX10 because I'm curious to see how much better or worse that Entebbe figure truly is compared to the Hot Toys DX10. Just wrapping up on the Entebbe quarter scale T1000. Now I know this video was a little bit of a shorter review but don't worry when we get the Battle Damage T800 and if I do a review on it it hopefully will be a little bit longer a little bit more in depth because there's a lot more to discuss on that figure in terms of the detail Battle Damage outfit. This guy is a pretty straightforward release. Now while the paintwork is totally outstanding and the accessories are absolutely awesome there is one one thing that does let it down and those are the boots. They really should have had a pleather style boot so that you could get just a little bit more articulation. However, he does make up for it in the fact that he comes with two head sculpts. The accessories are totally awesome. I mean, a metal spear and a metal covering for the display base, that is totally unheard of. Even these days from high-end collectible companies, you don't get stuff like that. So for Entebbe back in the day, they have absolutely killed it. Now in terms of picking up your very own, I bought mine off eBay, so have a look around and you very may well score yourself a bit of a deal. Either way, thanks again for watching. Check out Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and overall have a good time. Also check out Justin and Steph, our brand new second channel for behind the scenes videos, vlogs, and a hell of a lot more good stuff. Link down below, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.